My first coach was uh, Sergino, and uh, I won't forget that day. I think that day I was uh, suffering from uh, bacterial conjunctivitis. And uh, I was excited that uh, I was part of the, I was enrolled by my uh, sponsors to IPAS. So I, I didn't want to miss any anything. I wanted to avail myself for whatever IPAS has to take me through. Because uh, seeing the success stories that I was always seeing on Facebook and uh, those who have made it and the numbers that were making it, I, was, I said, no, this is the right place for me. So I, I wouldn't miss any event. So my first coaching session was with Sergino. I was suffering from conjunctivitis, but I don't know if he noticed that. <laughs> I, was, uh, I was struggling to keep my eyes open. And I think when I, I really opened my heart to hear what he had for me, and uh, what I remember very well that he, when he started, and I like the way he, he started with me, he wanted to tell me that with my years of experience and all what I think I know, I should throw it away. Throw it away and pick what they have for me. Hi. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. Welcome to IPAS yeah. Online Review and Mentoring Academy. My name is John, and I'll be your host for tonight. Here at Hope Talk, yeah. we invite successful IPAS Online Review candidates in the NCLEX to share their wonderful stories and learnings from their journey in achieving the goals of becoming registered nurses in the USA, Canada, and Australia. Welcome, everyone, to this special gathering where we shine a spotlight on his accomplishments deserve our utmost admiration. Today, we come together to honor him have not only passed his exams, but have also transformed challenges into opportunities for growth and achievement. And with that, I would like to introduce to you our newest NGN passer, Mr. Yakubu Abdul Ganiwu, one of the VSH Healthcare, uh, Healthcare Scholar, USRN. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Mr. Yakubu, first of all, thank yeah. you so much for accepting our invitation for this Hope Talk. You thank are you. our first guest for being the scholar of VSH, our Visa yeah. Solutions Healthcare. And we yeah. are really excited, yeah. sir, to know more how did you ace the exam. But before we proceed with that, I would like to ask whether you can share us your educational background and your working experiences leading up to your NCLEX preparation. Okay. Thank you so much for this opportunity. And uh, I am very, very excited to be part of the Hope Talk today. And then uh, I am also happy that I'm going to be a source of encouragement and uh, inspiration to the nurses who are still preparing to take the NCLEX. So it's a, it's a, it's a great opportunity for me. And then I couldn't miss it for anything else. So thank you so much. Yeah, I started as a, a registered nurse in Ghana, and uh, I think uh, all my schooling and everything has been in Ghana, and uh, I have been working as a, a nurse. I think I did seven years in the ward. Then I went for a BSc program to further education, and then I added another seven years. So in all, it's like uh, 14 years as a, a nurse, practicing as a nurse. And uh, I think for uh, when it comes to NCLEX, my first coach was uh, Sergino. And uh, I won't forget that day. I think that day I was uh, suffering from uh, bacterial conjunctivitis. And uh, I was excited that uh, I was part of the, I was enrolled by my uh, sponsors to IPAS. So I, I didn't want to miss any anything. I wanted to avail myself for whatever IPAS has to take me through. Because uh, seeing the success stories that I was always seeing on Facebook and uh, those who have made it and the numbers that were making it, I, was, I said, no, this is the right place for me. So I, I wouldn't miss any event. So my first coaching session was with Sergino. I was suffering from conjunctivitis, but I don't know if he noticed that. <laughs> I, was, uh, I was struggling to keep my eyes open. And I think when I, I really opened my heart to hear what he had for me, 
And uh, what I remember very well that he, when he started, and I like the way he, he started with me, he wanted to tell me that with my years of experience and all what I think I know, I should throw it away. Throw it away and pick what they have for me. So he started with, he took me to cardiovascular. I wanted to know what I knew and what I didn't know. He took me through some questions. Then he advised me that, yes, looking at the U.S. nursing system and then Ghana, definitely U.S. is far ahead. So with all what I think I know and then trying to depend on my experience, uh, I think I should put that aside for now and then concentrate on learning and mastering all the concepts of the NCLEX. And right from that day, I took that advice. I have been following IPASS step by step, all the lectures. I can admit that I, I haven't always been live on all lectures, but mostly I have been live. And then those lectures that I have missed, I always watch the videos. I go through the, uh, you call it the practice questions. And then this, uh, the, the, the question bank that they, they had in the IPASS system, I think I, I would say I answered almost 95% of all the questions, you see. So I programmed myself according to the, the program learning scheme that IPASS provided and uh, I, the study materials they recommended, I, I had all of them. Uh, Soundes was one of them, uh, La Clarity, Linda was one of them, and uh, this roadmap. And the roadmap was like my Bible. I, I actually... <laughs> They did it very well. I, I think uh, the, the pages were about uh, just 420 something. So I always make up my mind that in, in a month, I should finish roadmap completely and then start all over again. So before I went for the exam, I can assure you that I finished roadmap about four times. And even on the, the morning before the exam, the roadmap was still with me, and then that was what I was going through. I followed the, the advice in the roadmap concerning the uh, even the exam day, the exam day advice, the, the what you should do, what you should eat, how you should handle your everything. And I, I made sure I went by it. So in the, the morning before the paper, I went to the restaurant of the hotel. I had to follow the menu. <laughs> I, got, I got a very large, uh, a large meal that was high in protein, a, a lot of sausages. And then after that, I, I added a cup of coffee. I know, uh, you know, I don't know. I'm not saying take coffee if you don't take. I, I usually take coffee when I, I want to be busy. So <laughs> I got a, a cup of coffee and then I was okay. So I was so excited with it. So all the preparation I was preparing and then uh, finally the day has come. So yeah, we got to the exam center. They took us through the screening. They said thoroughly. There's, there was no place they didn't search apart from uh, <laughs> the private areas. <laughs> but they said us thoroughly to make sure there was no electronic device or gadget. Even the toothpick that was in my mouth, they asked me to bring it. So they collected <laughs> everything. <laughs> so we got to the, uh, finally, they took fingerprints. Uh, before you enter for the exam, they will take your fingerprints and everything. When you want to go for you to, to the bathroom or something, they will take your fingerprint before you leave. And when you come back, they will confirm again. So there is no room for cheating. Everything is genuine. Everything is clear. I started the exam initially, the questions. And then I would also want to encourage everyone to try and uh, go to the Pearson View, their website. They have this bulletin, the bulletin, the exam bulletin. Even though I passed, formed, uh, organized a webinar with uh, concerning the bulletin before the exam, I also downloaded the bulletin and then I took my time to go through everything concerning the exam. And in the bulletin, they were advised that a research was conducted and they, re they realized that students who answer questions too quickly, it means they guessed. So even if I knew the answer, I took my time to allow some 60 seconds to pass. It is very difficult for time to beat anyone in the NCLEX exam. There is enough, more than enough time, you see. So I went through the bulletin, took every advice. Then when the exam started, initially, the questions, they will start with very cheap questions. And uh, usually when you are seeing cheap questions, don't be too excited. It means that you are still not answering or getting marks above the pack, the, the pass line. 
because the computer is going to grade your performance based on your ability to stay above the pass mark. You see, so they start with uh, very cheap questions, trying to see where you are. Then they keep advancing the question as you go forward. And then it, it, I was smiling. And then for a long time, they select all that apply. This SATA. SATA was there. The SATAs were coming in their numbers. And I was excited, smiling. <laughs> and then they were, <laughs> everything. So I said, oh, finally, I will, I will also get to go to the U.S. I was excited. The, the NGN scheme. And uh, on my exam day, I think I took, if I want to add up all the NGNs I, I answered, they will be up to 20. And they, they really lambasted me with them. So when the computer was, the, the questions were about getting to 75 onwards. That was where I landed on my weak point. And that was psychiatry. I have, uh, okay. I, have, I, have, I have always been dodging psychiatry and praying not to meet it, which is a very bad thing. If you want to be okay on the exam day, make sure you don't leave any weakness. Because when the computer detects that that is your weakness, you will remain there. And if you are not careful, you can just fail. So but I expected that by 80 questions, my exam should stop because everything was okay. But when I got to 75 onwards, the psychiatric questions started appearing. Then I realized that hmm, I wasn't doing well in the psychiatry. Then when we got to 80, because of what happened, the exam didn't end. They continued to 90 and still 100 still. I said, no. And then I stopped. I stopped and took a deep breath. I said, no, I must make it. I took my time, readjust, stretch my muscles. I said, the next <laughs> questions that are coming, I must, I must get them all right. Then I forced all the psychiatry in my head <laughs> just to make sure that the following questions that will follow, I must make it all. So truly, the next questions I did well, I realized that the system changed and they took me out of the psychiatry into other areas and I started smiling. Then the, the success continued. And then the uh, NGNs, uh, uh, these complex compound questions, uh, case study uh, uh, questions were all coming. I was now smiling because all those areas, uh, I, wasn't, I wasn't having any issues with them. Psychiatry was there and, and they all proved not to be difficult. And uh, I, eventually I, the, the computer decided to take me up to 150. So all the break in between, the computer offered break, but I refused to go because mm. I must pass. The break is not important. I must pass. <laughs> so <laughs> I cannot fail. I must pass these exams. So I rejected all the breaks because I was okay. The bladder wasn't full and uh, my anxiety wasn't high, but my determination was high. I, I have okay. to pass these exams. I have to make it for my family, for myself, and uh, for all my loved ones. So I, I stood firm. So because I got to 150, I didn't know what to think, but I was sure that because computer allowed me to reach 150, it means that my chances were high because right from one to 75, I can say I was okay that time. So I was so, I wasn't fully confident, but my anxiety was rising and then I was confused. And uh, those who were, were yet to take the exam were asking, oh, how was it? I said, oh, well, I've done my best. We have to just wait and uh, see what God will do. So <laughs> yeah. lo, and be, lo and behold, just two hours, two hours after the exam, I got to the airport and I was looking so confused and anxious. And I got this message, email was coming in. Then when I checked the email, I, I couldn't believe myself. It was my license Montana had sent. Montana sent me my license. And I, I didn't know whether to celebrate or to, or where maybe it was a mistake. I, I didn't know. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I, I contacted a friend of mine. I said, oh, Montana has sent me. I haven't seen my exam results, but instead I got my license. So they told me, yes, that in Montana, there are uh, instances where they send the results very early. And I was so excited. Then I, I entered uh, this the Montana board, their website, to see the registered nurses. I checked, I, I logged in to check, and then my status was there, and my name was there, everything was there. And, oh, I, I couldn't, I was in the airport, so I couldn't, I didn't know if I should shout or I, what I should say. 
But I try to stay cool because <laughs> I don't want airport security to come for me. <laughs> you see, so when you pass, it is full of excitement. And if you program yourself, you will make it. Even days after the exam, sometimes I'm there and then I get the feeling as if, why won't I study for endless? Then another thought, oh, you, you already passed. So you see, when you program yourself, spend time, at least if you don't do anything, six hours of studies on your own will be okay. And what I used to do was in the morning, I wake up very early, somewhere three or no, three is too early, like 4 a.m. I study to 7 a.m. before I leave to work. Then when I come back, I, I come back from the from work, if there is time, fine. If there is no time, in the night, I take it from 7 p.m. to 11 p.m. before I go to bed. And that was what I was doing. And I made sure that before the exams, I, I would go through so many trial questions, these uh, questions that were being provided in the various, I call it the, uh, like, well, uh, U World, uh, this uh, Arches and co. But I couldn't afford any of them. I, I had only iPass. So I had to rely on iPass and make sure that all the resources that they had, I had to make good use of them. But I, I also had this soundest uh, question and answers that there were about 6,000 questions in, in it. And I made sure I went through twice. I took every question, read every rationale, went back to my roadmap for revision, revise everything, go to Soundless, the book itself, get all the anatomy and physiology behind me before I, the final day, and then everything was fine. I also made use of the advice the coaches would give. Don't overstress yourself. Don't overwork because the brain that is tired, the brain that is stressed cannot think. The errors are bound to happen when you are tired. And uh, uh, by the time you get to your exam day, you shouldn't be in a panic. Like you haven't read here, you haven't read there. If only you have actually studied it, you will know it when you sit before your question paper. Immediately you see it, the answer will automatically come back to you. You will know this is the answer, you see. So don't stress. If you are tired, you cannot do this. If you are tired and uh, you, you are burned out, you can't think far, you see. So I encourage everyone, learn, program yourself, concentrate, listen to the coaches. Don't miss any coaching session. They will advise you, they will take you through, and then believe it, you will make it. So this is uh, all what I can say about my endless journey. So I am so excited, and then I'm waiting for the day, the, the visa will finally come, and then uh, <laughs> I will also, yeah. <laughs> also relocate with the family. So I, I am I'm happy, and then I am encouraging everyone. You can also make it. You can also make it. So keep on keeping on. Yeah, so this is all what I can say. If anyone has any questions, I think I would, uh, I would take them. Thank yeah, you so, so much, uh, Sir Yakubu. You have tackled a lot of important things that a student must able to remember. Labyrinth of nursing education, right? So we have to use unique study techniques to find like a guiding star on how to really ace the NCLEX exam, whether through an online review course some visual aids or interactive sessions that you have. You have provided a very systematic review. And that's all I have noticed. The methods that resonate most of your mastery concept has somehow prepared you in the process of managing the strategies and techniques on how to really ace this exam. You also know, uh, mentioned earlier how Coach Gino inspired you to continue and study more of the NCLEX. We have the privilege of Sir Gino having with us tonight. Good evening, Sir Gino. Yeah, Hello, Sir Gino. Gino. Yes, sir. <laughs> nice to meet you again, sir. Yeah, it's been a while, isn't it? So, yes, sir. Uh, hello, everyone. Good evening in the Philippines, in Asia. Good afternoon here in Europe. And I think good morning in, in the U.S. Yeah, it's been yeah. a while since we had this conversation. Yakubu, I think it was last year, right? Yes, when you had the first um coaching session with me, things have changed. So yeah, yeah, but still, we still managed to get in touch, and we still managed to message me every now and then to be able for you to ask for some advice or anything like questions that you want to understand. But anyway, Yakubu, 
I would like to ask, what's your favorite fruit? My favorite fruit? Um, I think I like banana. Let's yeah. try to make an analogy about banana, okay? What's the last thing to grow on a fruit tree? The last Isn't thing it? to... To grow on a fruit tree is the fruit, right? Yes, please. It's yeah. the same with NPLEX. First, you have the roots, right? You mm -hmm. have the trunk. You have the leaves. And then here mm -hmm. comes the fruit. And now, you're eating the fruit of your sacrifices. <laughs> That's banana. At the same time, that's, that's the that's the US. That is true. However, that is before true. you eat that fruit, you need to establish first your roots. And your roots is your concept, and that's your foundation. That's why mm -hmm. you're holding strong as time takes by. You're very strong. You had that solid foundation, and that's what happened. After the roots, you have the trunk, right? However, yes. you have already solidified your foundation. What could go wrong? And the last thing to grow is the fruit, is what I've said. And that being said, it is somehow kind of related, well, somehow unkind of related to NPLEX. It's just a matter of time, guys. To all the students who are here at the moment, it's just a matter of time. And it's just a matter of your patience as well. So for us, for our students, to be able for you, to eat that fruit of sacrifice as well, that favorite fruit that you have. You mm -hmm. just need to have that roots, that trunk, that leaves, the flower, and the fruit, okay? That's how it works, guys. It's a matter of your patience as well, okay? So that's how that's it true. works. And that's what Yakubu said. Imagine before going to work, 3 a.m., 7 a.m., and then in the night, 7 p.m. to 11 p.m., that's how you're going to solidify, solidify your, your foundation. That's how you are going to master the concept. And that's your foundation. And that's how it works. A lot of students, hundreds of students, thousands of students, I think, they keep on saying same, same, same strategy, same concept, but different approach. It's just different approach, guys, approach. I mean, so it's up to you, my dear students, whenever we had this kind of hope talk or our students, and you can see to Yakubu's face as well, it doesn't mm -hmm. smile like <laughs> <laughs> It's different now, isn't it? You had that cloud yeah. night really. So yeah, take it from Yakubu. Take it from our students who had their hope talk before. It's just a matter of time, your patience as well. Okay, mm -hmm. try to change, be the change that you want to be to be able for you to achieve your dreams, and that's the changes that change that adjustment Yakubu did to be able for him to pass the exam. It's your sacrifice, guys. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> so that's all I can say at the moment. Thank you so much, Sir John. Thank you, and I hope you. more BHS students will do this whole talk as well to inspire our students in, in Africa. And congratulations, and see you in the West Side, okay? Thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank, thank you, sir. Thank you, Sir Gino, for attending this Hope Talk and providing message for Sir Yakubu. I agree with Sir Gino about what he said. It's like the fruit of your labor. You have to first master the content because this is the... It's like you're building a mosaic. So each subject is a unique contribution to an overall picture of your competence. So by diligently addressing your strengths and your weakness across all the topics, you have somehow a comprehensive understanding that will help to empower you to handle some varies of complex scenarios in the face of the practice questions. So that's what you did, Sir Yakubu. Were there any challenges that you faced during your preparation in NCLEX? And how did you overcome those challenges? Yes, with the challenges I faced, initially it wasn't a long-standing challenge because uh, uh, it had to do with the time, the just the time zone. You know, uh, the Philippines is eight hours ahead of us. So when it is... Uh, 7 p.m. in the Philippines. In Ghana, it is 11 a.m. So when the the time goes round and then the lectures is supposed to be 
it will, it, 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 I think there was some lectures that it is somewhere around 12, 12 a.m. or one, it's usually 12 a.m. to, I think the lecture is about four hours or so. So the, the, the time zone, actually, when lectures fall in the early mornings, is is very difficult. You see, so initially I, I was so determined that uh, I wanted to attend every lecture. But when I realized that no, uh, when I attend the morning lectures, it's difficult for me to run my daily activity. So I left those lectures and rather watch the videos at a convenient time. Yeah, I think this was the only challenge. And uh, even though some of my uh, colleagues complain about the language barrier, to me, um, I have the study material before me. And then the lecturer is mostly speaking English. As for classroom, uh, it is difficult to, you know, the students over here, we say vernacular. Students like to speak a lot in their own dialect. So, but the lecturer would definitely speak English. Um, I didn't see that as a problem. My issue was just the time zone. And uh, I think after a while, I, after I readjusted myself, it was okay for me. The lectures that were now falling around 8 p.m. in the Philippine time was 12 here in Ghana, and that was 12 p.m. And then it was okay. And I used to attend lectures mostly, and then I think it was okay. Apart from this, there's no other issue. But what I want to add is uh, more of like... Uh, to encourage IPAS to update the question bank. We need thousands of questions. They should upgrade the question bank to somewhere above 2,000 so that students who finish reading the concepts and want to try their hands, I think they can enter there and then uh, and try. And then the more you try and read the rationales, the more you get to know because some of the rationales are there, you will not find them in your books. It is in the questions you see them. And then I made use of these uh, free trials from Acha and uh, UWorld. And uh, I, I, I will go in, they will give you a seven day free trial. I will use their seven days. After that, I ran to another website. And there are many. So uh, each and everyone can also try these ones and see. You see. So apart from, I don't have, I don't think there were, there were many challenges that I would say were related to like obstacles pre preventing me from reaching my goal. I don't think there were that many, if not just the time zone. And uh, that one too was not anything anybody could change. It is it is nature. And then definitely you have to adapt to nature. <laughs> so I don't I think everything was fine. Thank you for highlighting that, Sir Kubu. If whenever we are unable to attend the live discussion, rest assured that we will still have the recorded session. But mm -hmm. I know some of us or many of us would like to attend the live because of the interactive sessions. Mm -hmm. But yes, I know uh, the time difference is a bit challenging, but rest assured that you have so much to learn with regards to the NCLEX. And I know sometimes time management is one of the challenges for, for the many of our classmates, most especially who are working as a staff nurse or working as a non-bedside uh, nurse. So how are you able to manage your time working and studying at the same time? Yes, I had to cancel all sorts of entertainments and uh, go in to sit <laughs> and, uh, and I deal with friends. I, I had to cancel everything, even though once in a week I would go and then have a, a refreshment, you sit and chat. Then I used to play a uh, draft, this game, board game a lot. Uh, I had to cancel all that. Yeah, so I, I just structured myself so that any point in time in the day, if I am free, I am doing something. I am studying a concept and I always pick it concept by concept, chapter by chapter, you see. So in the, like I, I earlier said, uh, in the morning before I go to work, I have studied and then I will take Linda and answer the questions, go through one of the concepts, answer all the questions before I go to work. So if I answer the questions and I'm not able to read the rationales, maybe because time is up, I leave that one. When I get to work and then I'm less busy, I can take it rationale by rationale, rationale by rationale. And then when I come back in the evening again, I study again up to 11 and then I'm okay. So you, you will have to just find time. And, and at least if you find 
you study your own study six hours a day, I think you'll be okay. So you just have to make time. The, the enclave is something that you need to pass. And uh, especially when you consider the amount of money you have spent to prepare and then even to take flight to go for the exam, it won't be anything that you would want to write twice. And then I know it is not everybody who might make it the first time, but losing does not mean everything is over. You have only lost money and time. You haven't lost your life. Loss is to pick up, reevaluate your method, and then try again. You will make it. Yeah. So I think you have to make time for NCLEX. I think this was what I did, and uh, it, it worked for me. I was. Go ahead, I used to. I used to sleep a lot. Especially before the exam, some three days before the exam, I stopped every studies. And then I was only resting and chatting and playing dummy a draft by the roadside. <laughs> and, and, and then I was okay. So, so even at the airport, I wasn't studying. I met some colleagues who were also going for the exams. You see that mm-hmm. even on exam day, they were, they were attending lectures, these live lectures. So I said to myself, ah, you are going for an exam. And on your exam, you are at the airport and you want to attend live lectures. You see, it means that you are not yet done. It means that there are other areas you haven't studied, which is not good. So make time. You can rest properly and then everything is fine. Thank you, Mr. Yakubu. You really uh, emphasize the importance of time management. Because yes. somehow this is our backbone for successful and flex preparation. That's why it's really important in the beginning, you have already structured on how you want to plan your uh, study for NPX. Let's say you'll be preparing for six months of online review. Then you'll be deciding when to take the examination date. It's really important to somehow balance your study periods of time and some breaks in between. So Mm -hmm. you have to be more efficient with the time allocation. Not only enhances your productivity, but also you have to ensure comprehensive coverage of all the content, the necessary content that you need. So ultimately, in this way, you will be more prepared in tackling the practice question, most especially the NCLEX exam. Mm-hmm. Did you feel any stress in your preparation for NCLEX or Yakubu? Yes, uh, in a, a bit. I felt some stress a bit, like the stress came when I felt I was ready for the exam, but the exam day was not coming. And the, the days were longer. The nights were long, even more longer. When you sleep, the day, especially when they, they, I took my exam on the 5th of June. The 5th of June. So the 5th of June looked like, it was just a few days, but it looked like one year. And <laughs> I think I, I, that was the only stress I felt. You see, so apart from that, I don't think there was, I, there was any uh, stress, especially with regards to preparing. It was just a, uh, the waiting, waiting for the exam day that I felt impatient. And uh, <laughs> I felt that no, I, must, I must get through with this exam. Yeah, so <laughs> uh, that is it. I think it's because you are well prepared for this examination. That's why you have this driven force and excitement to have the examination right away. But then we have to really be more patient when it comes to this. Because you wanted to to take the exam on your first try. So, but of course, for those students who are taking their second try and third try, not to worry, like what Mr. Yakubu have said. You have to really find ways and be confident that you'll be be able to pass this and play somehow. So it it will still boils down to your mastery concept and all and Mm -hmm. your preparation for this and flex. Sir, how are you able to manage your stress during that time? Yes, when you, you manage stress, you do what you love doing, like uh, uh, movies. I, I, I like a lot of movies, these uh, seasonal movies, these uh, American movies. I enjoy them so much. And then also you go out and then you chat with friends, whatever you can do to take away the stress. Some would like to listen to uh, music and uh, some would like to go and uh, I don't know, uh, but I won't advise alcohol. Some people use alcohol as a means of <laughs> taking, <laughs> dealing with their stress, but no, it, uh, alcohol won't be healthy because uh, it causes brain damage. So just spend time with family and friends and then uh, converse, converse, and then prepare yourself spiritually too because uh, the human being is not only made of flesh and blood, the body, the soul, and the spirit. So 
you must be spiritually strong. You 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 must be clean. <laughs> you you you, you have whatever whatever bad thing you think you are uh, bad practice. You are practicing. You have to stop. Like maybe you are smoking and alcohol. Cancel everything. Clean your system, and then I uh, I believe God will help you. You will make it. Thank you for sharing that, Mister Yakubu. It's really important for us to take breaks while we are studying for NCLEX. Because some mm-hmm. of our students or classmates they find it guilty whenever they want to watch a movie or they want to play online games and so on. It's really important to assess ourselves on what are the things that can help us to release our stress. For example, some of them they wanted to do some physical exercise, like what you said. You want to have some conversations with your friends, like your supportive networks, to mm-hmm. somehow maintain a balanced state of mind. Otherwise, you will feel exhausted. That's why it's really important to have some uh, to manage your time studying, and at the same time relaxing. And it will this will really help you to ace the NCLEX. And Sir Yakubu, what are the test taking strategies that you have learned during the lecture, and how are you able to attack the questions? During my preparation, I think the straightforward questions, the method I used was if I didn't know the answer straight away, I eliminate those I think would would be out. And then when you eliminate, definitely you will get two, two that could be right and could be wrong. Like that is now 50-50. So if there were four possible questions, uh, four possible answers, you now have only two. So you can now choose between the two. So the one that my guts tell me to go for, then I go for that one. But that method does not work for uh, SATA. SATA, even if you know only one, I beg you go for the only one that you know. You can only guess if you don't know anything at all, then you can choose some. But if you know something, then you are for sure that this is the right answer. Go with that one alone. Don't add anything because if you add anything, you might lose even the one that you know. You see, and uh, I think with the the NGN type of questions, these case studies, those ones, if you are good with, uh, if you have read your concepts and then the notes properly, that is the only way you can make that one. Because if you read through the the case, you read the case, you you should you would know the diagnose and then. And you know the condition, you, you can easily answer the questions. And I think this is how I went by it. Yeah. My, my guessing was, was not much. Only, uh, I can say a few questions. But mostly, if you read the question, the answers are straightforward and there is no ambiguity. It is one correct answer or the rest are wrong. You see? So uh, I think this, this was my method. And I think there are more strategies in the roadmap that you could learn, that you, you, you must adapt some strategy and apply, and then I think you will be okay. Thank you, Sir Yakubu. You have mentioned earlier that you did not purchase any questions bank at all. You only utilize IPAS Online Review and Mentoring Academy lectures and the question banks. Am I right to say that is this enough yeah. for you to pass the examination? Yes, it is enough to me. But you will need more practice questions, which uh, I pass is still lacking in that direction. So whichever method you would use to get different N questions that look like N place questions, wherever you can get them to answer, you would have to. But with the material, the strategy I pass is using, I think it is enough to get a student through. Yes, uh, it is enough, apart from the question bank area. And I believe if they work on that, I would compare IPAS to ICHA and to UWorld and to all the best that we have in this world. Yeah, so to me, it was enough. I have done it, and I believe everybody can do it. Yeah. Thank you, Sir Yakubu. It's really true when you do your practice question, because somehow this serves as your cornerstone for NCLEX preparation. So each question answered, uh, refines your critical thinking skills and somehow deepens your understanding in turning your knowledge into practical application. Regardless if you're working as a nurse or you are not working as a bedside nurse, as long as you have practice, the practice question and you did your mastery concept, anything is possible to pass the exam. And with regards to the testing strategies, it's really important to attend. It's a lecture by Coach Jamie or Mom Jamie, no? 
it really involves your mastering uh, the techniques to dissect the questions. For sure, you'll be able to learn this along the way. Of course, Sir Yakubu, was there a time that when you do your practice que questions, do you get any low scores? Yes, yes. And uh, How are you able to cope uh, that low scores? What do you do then? Actually, any time uh, I, I scored low, it, it used to worry me a lot. Sometimes, if you are not careful, you can be discouraged. And uh, you, you, you see, so there are times that I scored low and I would take my time, go back to the concept and then correct myself, read the rationales. Sometimes uh, you get a question wrong because you are using the wrong rationale. The reason behind the question you, you didn't get that right. And then you can get the answer wrong. So I go back, read the rationales. And if I still don't understand, I go back to the, the, the books, the roadmaps, and then the sounders. Because uh, I can remember there was this particular question, which I even thought it was a question I saw on the U-World. I even thought U-World was wrong. It, it, it had to do with the, the, the Parkland formula that okay. I, I, I didn't understand a particular formula. It had to do with how to calculate the amount of fluid mm. that a patient, pa bend, patient who had bends will be needing within eight hours, 12 hours, 24, yeah. So I thought it was wrong. I had to, even seeing it in the book, I still thought it was wrong because I thought I should be right. Then I called <laughs> friends, discussed with friends, and actually a friend was able to explain to me, and then I got the reason behind the answer. And, and that is how I used to go about it. Yeah, so any anytime I go back to my books and uh, I'm not getting anything, I try to get in touch with a friend. Or better still, I arrange a meeting with uh, our coaches and uh, some of them are able to guide you through and then even give you strategies by which you can learn and then everything will be fine. So anytime I was scoring low with my practice, I went back to revise that particular area because it is definitely a particular area that is bringing you down. So if you identify that place, you patch it. And then this was what I did. It's really true, Sir Yakubu. Whenever you have some questions or some topics that you are not sure of, it's okay to ask your classmates or your educators. Because the most important thing is we understand what the topic's about. Don't skip anything unless you understand the topic. Am I right? Yes, sir. And Sir Yakubu, what would be your advice to our classmates who will be taking their NCLEX exam very, very soon? My advice to them is that they should keep on pressing. They, they are going to make it. They have already made it. But uh, I would like to advise them that with all the questions or question banks in the system, the, the, you can never go through all the questions before your exam. If you think you want to see every question, it is not possible. But what you can hold at your fingertips is your concepts. And if you have your concepts and you are okay, there is no question that will come from any angle that you won't be able to answer. Because I realized that the end class questions, even on the exam day, they are the same questions we see or the same thing in our books. They only change the language. The answer will definitely be the same answer. So if you have your concepts at your fingertips, you, you, you don't need to go through every question. You see? So this is my advice to you. Revise. Try to finish the roadmap four times before you go. And if you take four days, you can finish the book every four days. So every four days, you can finish the book. And it is so summarized, so concise, that it doesn't have a lot of irrelevant material. If you can... Keep everything at your fingertips. I, I believe you'll be okay. Yeah, so this is my advice. Hold your roadmap firmly and then it will see you through. Thank you, Sir Yakubu. I agree with what you said in everything that you have mentioned here. Repetition is the key in everything that we do. It's a matter of understanding the concept, not memorizing. So you mm -hmm. have mentioned earlier, you have read the roadmap four times, right? Yes. Those advices sir, are really important for our students, most especially who will be taking the, their NCLEX exam very, very soon and who are still starting with this NCLEX preparation. And were there any some common mistakes you made while preparing? And how did you overcome them? 
I can't remember. I cannot pinpoint to something that I will call a mistake because at the end I have succeeded. So yes. uh, the, the, the end justifies the means. So if That's if true. I have succeeded, the, it means everything I did was right. So, <laughs> so for now, I, I, I would say everything I did was right. I took my time. I enjoyed myself. I rested a lot. I took my study serials, went through my concepts, everything, relaxed, watch my movies, listen to my music, play my games. And, and at the end, I have made it. So I think every step that I took was, was okay. I, I, I would say there was no mistake. But I would like to add that it is very easy to panic when, when taking the exams. But with me, at least, uh, I think I have experienced a lot in this world that has taught me so many lessons. I had only one chance to make it in this exam, and yes. I wasn't ready to, 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 to lose it. And uh, it, it got to a time that I, I nearly panicked. And when I nearly panicked, I stopped the, my, the exam myself, took time, stretched myself, advised myself, readjust my brain, and went back to the exam. So there is no room for panic. Control your anxiety, deep breathing. If in case you want to panic, stop and deep breathe. There is a lot of time. There is time won't catch you in the exams. Take time and I believe you you would make it. So anxiety, don't give room for anxiety, especially when 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 you are taking the exam. You cannot like the it's not, not like the trial, uh, the the practice where when you answer a question, they, they mark it and you know whether it's right or wrong. But during the exam, if you take your time, because anytime a question passes, you will see it again. If you take your time, you, are, you know this is the answer, but take your time. There is one thing I learned during the exams. If you are quick to take in, choosing your answers, you will realize that if you have taken your time to go through the whole question, you might not choose that answer. The answer changes at the end of the sentence. Sometimes they can trick a student to give, uh, you read the question and jump to conclusion. And you would get the answer wrong at the end. Always finish reading your question before you choose your answer. Even if you think you know this one, you must finish the question because the question can change. The meaning of the question can change at the end. So patience, spend time, take time. Go through every question. Consider every question as the question that will let you pass. If you must get it right. And uh, I believe everything will be fine. So this is all what I can say. Uh, wow. no, no giving up. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Sir Yakubu, for, for providing inspiration and motivation for our classmates. We really need Thank this you. fuel to help our students to drive more with their preparation journey. And with that, we would like to present to you your. Thank you. Uh, this I'm certificate excited. is proudly presented to Yakubu Abdul Ganiwu for successfully passing the NCLEX RN examination. This serves as a proof that a successful candidate indicated in this certificate is a safe nurse based on the USA Standards of Nursing Practice. Signed by wow. Sir J. Padong and Sir Mark Zaspa. Congratulations, Mr. Yakubu. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I am, I, am, I am most grateful. I am most grateful. Yeah, thank you. Mr. Yakubu, do you have any message for your VSH family? Yes, I would say they shouldn't give up. Continue. You would make it. Age doesn't matter. It is just concepts. And, and the concept is not so broad that it will, you cannot finish. It is, it is not the ocean that you cannot see the end. Finish the concepts. Go through it. I, I believe you can make it. I have made it, people made it before me, and it was they are making it that encouraged me. So I am also encouraging you today that you can do it. So keep on pushing, it, it, it will be well. I wish all those who are soon going to take their exam, I wish you all the best. Uh, I wish you all the best, and I, I, by the grace of God, I know you would also make it and then uh, join us in celebration. Yeah, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Sir Yakubu. And one last thing. May I ask, how did IPASS help you in achieving your American dream? IPASS has helped me a lot. I cannot quantify because it would have been nearly impossible without the, the structures IPASS put in place with the, the coaching, the, the study material, the, the process that they took me through 
has really helped. And if I can remember correctly, when I enrolled in the IPAS, they first give you some pretests. And with the pretest, I scored 47 out of uh, I think 100 questions or so. I scored 47 and I said, no, it means work is there to be done. I must score higher. So at the end, when the, I took the final assessment, I saw that my score was far better than the, the, what I started with. And I, I am most grateful to IPAS for their guidance. And then the, their Bible they provided, that is the roadmap, has, has really made things very easy. And uh, I am most grateful. Thank you all for your support. And then I, I want to encourage those with IPAS. You see, uh, we, we, we have a, a saying in my language, that uh, the slap that is closer to you, you take that one first. You see, I pass is the one you have. Concentrate on that one. Don't lose confidence. And then you are thinking of you uh, world, you are thinking of arches. And when I pass is with you, concentrate on it. People have concentrated there and they have made it. So why can't we make it? Concentrate. You concentrate. Don't listen to complaints of people. Uh, you, you, you depend on the, the negatives of, uh, there is no perfect system. You, you, you want to rely on the negatives of the system and then you lose focus and lose interest. It is to your own disadvantage. Concentrate, make use of everything IPAS has to provide. And I, I, I believe you would make it. Yeah, they, they have really helped me and then I, I know they will help you too. Yeah, so thank you so much to IPAS and uh, for, for your guidance and support, I am most grateful. Thank you, Mr. Yakubu, for trusting IPAS in helping you achieving your American dream. This is really a good story of perseverance, your personal goals, and desire to make a difference in your passion and the sustained effort and commitment. This serves really an inspiration to remind us and our classmates of their purpose and the impact they aspire to make. Congratulations again, Mr. Yokubu. Thank you. And all the best to your future endeavor. Thank you so much. And I wish you the best. I pass, 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 p